اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وم الحیات الدنیا اللہ متا الغرور صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدتم السان یفق القلی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ د ورس وچ آئی ہیو ریسائٹڈ از فرام سورہ الحدید میننگ دی آئرن چیپٹر 57 ورس نمبر 20 دی لاسٹ سیگمنٹ اللہ سیز وما الحیات الدنیا الا متاع الغرور دا لائف اف دس ورلڈ از all delusion enjoyment of delusion mata'ul ghurur delusion with enjoyment today the topic is the commotion of the dajjal at the dajjal the anti christ you see to understand the veracity of this subject you must be aware of some terminologies used in different religions the eschatology the philosophy behind those all aspects <clears throat> why i have read this ayah because this ayah is the support to deliver my feelings the ideas and those exfoliation of hadith that this world is full of delusion fitna the dajjal the commotion and the trials of anti christ why you see today the science is busy speculating the matter matter is visible it can be felt with our five senses so we are able to accept that this is the ultimate truth beside all other metaphysical sciences we do not care as there is a big curtain has been spread on the horizon to block the spirituality we love cosmology but from the frame of reference that it is only showing you materialistic world go to the quantum physics level try to manipulate the atomic numbers try to play with electrons protons and try to change the property of that matter into something else fitna the jal manipulate play do experiments on the things which are coming into your five senses beside that tell all the people do not put and waste your energy so what is the result the result is that you will become an animal because once you close the eyes of spirituality what else is left your animal being basic instincts if five senses is telling me that this is cold this is hot you have receptors neurons on your skin everywhere it will transfer the message into your brain then those receptors will tell to another neurons interneurons whatever and then you will take back the muscle will react and then you will take back your hand these are five senses so all the judgment is circulating circum circumambulating around these things <clears throat> so what is the ultimate truth that humanity has forgotten that the ultimate the biggest reality of this world is death the biggest reality of this world is death and the biggest reality of this whole cosmology is the day of judgment the day of resurrection when everything will be folded like a blanket like a sheet allah says in the quran 
I will fold everything, every data, everything, every knowledge. That thing humanity has forgotten. And why? Because this was supposed to be done. This was supposed to be done. Because it has been prophesied in the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the time will come when the people, they will love this dunya and they will detest death. They will never like dunya wa krahiyatil maut. They will say the maut, the death should go away. And then all those winds, energy, inclination, potential power will be indulged to hoard, to stash worldly means. Money, women, children, lands, conquering of lands, branded horses. Allah says in the Quran, Hubbul, Hubbul Shahwat, the things the men covet in his sight. Number one, women. Number two, children. Pedigrees, these high qualities, not pedigrees, sorry, like family values. Number three, gold and silver. Number four, conquering of lands. Number five, branded horses. This is the rides you can convert into these days. Cars, in the future, flying cars. But something you need to write. Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 14. Allah said, these things you have to take it. These are the values of materialistic world. That is why Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Hadid, that indeed the life of this world is the amusement of delusion. Something is there, but it's not there. You are thinking it's there. Everything in this world is a test to us. That is why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says that this world is a prison for a believer, but paradise for disbeliever. Because disbeliever, atheist, agnostics, or whatever the religion, they love this dunya. They say they think that we're going to be eternal. We're going to live eternal. That is why you see these, the, the agents of Dajjal, Antichrist, which I'm going to come. They are busy in somehow to increase the life or to start to start living some kind of immortality that nothing, no death will come. As I said before, two biggest realities of this world is number one, death. And another reality of this whole universe is Yomul Qiyama, when everything will be folded. And today science is telling us that the universe is expanding, but it will come back to the point of starting. Or something is going to, disaster is going to happen. That this thing all will be folded. This is what science is telling us. It's a spring reaction. Something started from one unity, expanded. Now everything going to come back again. It's like a reaction, action to reaction. And this thing going to happen when, how, which time, Allah knows. Nobody knows. We just have a speculative information from Hadith that these are the signs of Yomul Qiyamah, but there is no ages between that. We cannot infer, we cannot induce or deduce the depthness of those messages, but there is a hint, there is a sign that be vigilant that these things gonna come. First understand the terminologies, the eschatology of Dajjal. Dajjal means in Arabic trickster. The one who tricks, the one who plays with you. You see, I have a table in front of me. This table has been made through the wood. Wood came from where? From this earth. And wood is a fuel. For thousands, for millions of years, sun is producing heat, rays, rays, rays. It absorbs the energy. It has a potential energy. When there is an oxygen, the fire will come. You let light a fire. Oxygen produced, the wood will catch the fire because it is a fuel. Now this wood is there. I can manipulate the wood into a paper. I produce papers. I produce table and chairs. 
this is materialism when this production comes into the nature of wishes this is what allah says that then now it has become that you have an obsession of this world i can use table for some useful purposes but when i start making tables with the beautiful marbles with the sheen on it and all those things and little adornments and putting things in things and making people crazy to buy and love this and so much love is there that you you don't want to die anymore you don't want to worry about what happens after life after death you are busy in making your home decorations this has become obsession of this world unfortunately this is where allah reminds you that this life is not eternal this is a delusion wake up wake up wake up things are provided to you as prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that this world is created for you and you were created for akhira this yes, we know this world is created prophet said this world is like a harvesting ground the more you harvest the more you're going to brew in the hereafter cut in the hereafter so everything is important in this world every time is important but what's the problem come when you start thinking that this world is eternal that is what this all lecture about two realities nobody has escaped not firaun not nimrud did nimrud say that i will never die or i would never die he never proclaimed those things did firaun say that no what they were saying that we indeed we are gods but they never said that we are eternal watch it because back of the mind he knew that he going to die the body is decaying the cells are decaying you can feel your own body every year you see you can see your hands your skins are getting wrinkled then you try try to putting anti aging cream won't help there's no nothing will stop decaying your cells because you are being generated like that you are being programmed in your dna structure that sooner or later this is your age in this dunya of about this regarding this gravity you are living in this world that your life span will be like this you can't help unless you are being made through that dna structure like the old prophets 900 years allah is changing your structure his evolver Allah is evolver one of his attributes is that he is the evolver and the evolver means the one who brings evolution into your structure into your adaptation adaptation is the procedure which is ingrained in the people it is ingrained in your dna so you are just in getting adopted by the people like the people who are living in the on the about like the 1000 or 1500 to 2000 meters above sea level their oxygen capacity is bigger than ours but it doesn't mean that that they are different species no it is adaptation this is allah has given us these qualities so insaniyat humanity has been adopted into different stages that the more we go in the future the life span will be reduced and it has effect of many and number one is environmental effect number 2 the food quality we are taking nowadays the food quality we are eating the life span is not going to be longer this is reality because all this non organic food this is the part of fitna the jal this is also the part of fitna the jal that to make everything materialistic more materialistic if there was somehow organic now you have to produce more materialism in it somehow somehow should be there which is not pure the jal means trickster but according to islam the jal has two faces one his trials and tribulation before his physical appearance and i'm not going to discuss his physical appearance i'm going to make this another inshallah lecture on that but now what is all commotions in the trials he is being playing with the people first in the hearts of the people produce the blast of love the spark of love ignite the spark in the hearts that this world is everything what will happen after the death we will see it nobody has you know come back from the death so tell you to to tell you that what really he saw 
or what really happened. But Allah says in the Quran, that there's some incidents that the guy has seen what is there and he's telling the oh, people, listen to the listen to messengers. Life after death is very is a big thing, is a reality. But people are not thinking about that. That is why they are making people to love this dunya by producing things. These are God's inverted commas. These people who are making new technological stuff, devices, pioneering, pioneered engineering, these people are gods now. Can't you see the, the billionaires are the people who are the best to create materialism? Have you ever seen a billionaire who's producing spirituality? No. Because nowadays is the era of materialism. You need to study the matter into so uh, intensely that everything you have to talk about to produce, to create things. That is why Allah reminds us in the Quran that these people, these atheists, they cannot even make a wing of a fly or they cannot even make a fly. Can you make it ex nihilo? Create creation of ex nihilo, can you do it? To produce things out of nothing? You can't. Allah is challenging you. Can you do that? What you are being producing. And these atheists thinking that they are gods now. They, they create things. You are not creating things. You are making things ex not nihilo. Ex material. Like you have a matter. And you are producing and converting those matter into different objects. That's all. Wood was given to you in your primary sector. You gave that wood to the secondary sector and the tertiary sector is receiving those services. Where did you produce the wood? Can you produce the wood? Allah says, Badiyo samawati wal ard. He is the, the origin of heavens and the earth. Allah is the origin of the heavens and the earth. You are not the origin of something. You are the creators of table, but you are not the originators of the table. This is what Allah says in the Quran. So if, is there any atheist or scientist, <clears throat> a megalomaniac who thinks that he is, he is the number one brain in the world, is he able to produce, not to produce, sorry, to create anything without using these matters? Never. Even you go out of the earth, all these matters are there. These atomic and subatomic particles are there. Everything is there. Molecules are there. You cannot produce or create out of nothing those atoms. Can you? Allah created it. Everything has atoms. Can you produce an atom, a fly, and its atomic number? Can you create it out of nothing? You can't. The only thing you can do, you can manipulate things. Take the iron, change into weapons. <clears throat> You cannot even, you cannot even uh, produce what, what I'm going to produce. Allah says in the same surah, remember I quoted Surah Al-Hadid, the iron. Allah said that I have even sent down, I have sent, sent down the iron into this earth, into the world. You can't even control that. So the Jal Fitna, the purpose of this whole lecture is that open both eyes. Prophet said the Jal will be blinded with the left eye. Sorry, with the right eye. Because the right eye is a spirituality. And he his eye will be open on the left side, which is the worldly eye. So if your both eyes are open, you will be able to see the difference of the Jal. And you will be able to understand the commotion of the Jal. But if your eyes are only open from the right side, you will see spirituality, you will go to jungles like these monks, like these uh, yogis, what their life are. Wasting the people time, telling false things, false idea, taking them away from the reality of the world, solve the problems. Can these yogis, these, uh, you know, monks, can they solve the problem of the world? They can't. Sitting in seclusion, sitting in their rooms, and then what are you going to uh, produce things out of it? Nothing. Other side, if your left eye is open and right is closed, you will just be become greedy, selfish, introvert. You don't worry about what people are doing. Of course, 
because you're busy in your own making money, making love, making, making life, making life better. Woman, money, that is all. And cars, materialism, nothing else in their, in their lives. They think that this is all. Make money, get money, make money. Then throw that money in the market, get more money. But that's all, full stop. Make big houses. A typical person nowadays is the person who is, who is like a animal, who has become an animal to get those things like he is uh, coveting. Number one, he wants to make a house. How stupid the person is. He spent 40 years of his life to make a house and he doesn't even know that he will be able to live inside or no. But he wasted 40 years of his life to make a house. Angels laugh on him. Isa salam says to build a house on his world is the same thing like you build a house on a hill or some like a soft hill or some sandy stuff. When the rain comes, it will go down. This world is like a bridge. Just cross over it. Do not build on it. This is the saying of Jesus Christ. Why? Why you are building things on this world when you know that it's going to go away? Yes, you should have a house. It's your right. But not with the greed. Just to for the shelter. And a small house can be sufficient. I'm talking about the urge of wishes. I want to big, make a big house. One canal, two canals. It's not enough. This is the urge. 40 years you wasted your life for what? What did you do for Allah and His Rasul? Nothing. What did you do for the welfare of the society? Nothing. This is what to become an animal. Sahaba says, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu what is the difference between a human and an animal? He said that humans, they live for others, but animals live for themselves. So calculate, evaluate yourself. Are you living for others or are you living for your own self? If you're living for your own self, then indeed you are an animal. So, Fitna Dajjal, it's all delusion. It's amazing that I never see any Imam on the member. On the member and he's still speaking and he's telling about Dajjal. I never heard in my life. It's strange that something has been, you know, uh, hit upon their heads. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, Dajjal will not come. Till the ulamas or the or, or the sheikh, whatever, they, when they keep discussing about him from the members of the masjid. But once they stop discussing about him, then the jal will come. Do they, don't people, they see these kind of hadiths? Ask yourself, in your local mosques, how many times you heard about the jal in the khutbah of Jumu'ah or somewhere else? Never! From the member of the masjid, I'm not talking their personal conventions. Nobody knows the awareness of the Jal. Nobody knows what is this all happening. How the things and the games are being played over you. The fast and losing being played over you. You have no idea. Every tiny fraction of your life, you are wasting. Wasting for unusual things. For nonsense things. Waste of time in vain. Everything is vain. Can't you see? Somebody is alive today. He's going to die tomorrow. What is the purpose? The purpose is, this is the test. The ultimate test has been given to us and we have to strive and struggle for the cause of Allah. We have no option. We were born without any concern, without any contract. We're going to die without any concern, without any contract. The only contract we have, this invisible contract is Al-Quran. Allah says, believe in me and then have no fear. Be patient. We cannot escape from these all kind of things. We are stuck. That is why Prophet says that this is, this is a prison for a believer. You feel like suffocation. What is this all about? But you see, look at the world. The kuffar, <clears throat> they enjoy every fraction, every bit of this world, this life. They are busy in making your long ages. I'm not against making a long age. Health is your right to, to make a healthy life. But you see, the concept is wrong. If you are making your life healthy to live longer, it's good for you. This is amana. Your body is your amana Allah has given you. You should not cause destruction to your own bodies. Even say Allah says in the Quran, do not cause your own hands contribute to your destruction. Be wise, be clever and compete with one another in good works. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 195. 
But it doesn't mean that you make your life longer only because you want to enjoy and love this dunya for the love of this dunya. No, do everything for the love of Allah and His Rasul. And do not do good deeds because of paradise. Go do, uh, do good deeds to please Allah and Allah in return give you paradise. This is the right approach and behavior and ethics in Islam. People say, oh, do good works. You know, Allah will give you Jannah. No. To please Allah and in return, Allah will give you Jannah. This is the covenant we made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That paradise is a gift for the believer. Like it's the same thing. Do not study for degrees. Study for your knowledge. In the knowledge in return, the, the university will give you a degree. That's the approach should be. The Jal Fitna is very clear and it is destroying everybody's hearts. It are hitting on your head and you're making you atheists, you're making you agnostics, skeptics. Because when the eye of spirituality is closed, what else is there to speculate? Everywhere you see, Madda. Everywhere you see, is matter. Matter. Then doctors, they think they are gods, inverted commas. They think that everything is in our control, in our hands. That is the Prophet says, read Surah Kahf in Jumu'ah's Friday's night to make yourself away from the commotion of Dajjal and fitna of Dajjal. This is the short lecture I gave you. I hope it's an eye-opener for the people to, to understand what things all around. Close, open your both eyes to understand the fitna of both. Matter is there, spirituality is also there. The sciences are there, there, metaphysical science is also there. Combine both, it will become hikmah. The wisdom with Luqman alayhi salam said it. The wisdom is to open both eyes. Otherwise, you will go either to this side or that side and both will be dangerous for you.